Looks like I'm gonna stick with this beekeeping gig. So I've decided that perhaps I better go out and buy some new boxes. And so I'm trolling through the internet and I found these um, paradise boxes, which are really cool, hard foam, crazy strong and light and cool. And I don't know, and they've got a really cool system with feeders and extractors and all sorts of cool stuff. And they're from over in Finland, which is obviously freezing friggin' cold. But I figured they're going to be awesome for up here because it's bloiling and blooming up. So it's the opposite end of the scale, but it should keep them, keep the girls a bit insulated. Anyway, you've got obviously the sides and the, the, well, the sides and the top and the bottom. And it's pretty much all just interconnected. It's like uh, pretty Lego or Meccano, which is pretty cool. I'm not 100% sure, and I'm sure someone will tell me, but some people glue them and some people don't glue them. But, so I thought I would hedge my bets and glue them a little bit. <laughs> so, but anyway, so we've got some cool glue that says it's like styrofoam. And obviously, you've got to make sure you get the bloody thing all the same way up, otherwise you're going to get a heck of a mess. So I just put a little bit of glue in there just for that. I did paint some before I glued them the other day, and that was a bit crazy. And they can't really go together wrong anyway. So if you try to keep the same, keep them all the same, it's kind of cool. Obviously, if you like, always face them the same way. So you, oh no, don't do that. As you can see, they go together pretty easy. And I just run a little bit along here. And then they've got these cool little supports for the ends so that uh, when you put your hive tool in there, you're not going to wreck this little bit of styrofoam. I mean, you can either put them on before you do the first join. Of course, the cool thing about it is it's almost idiot proof, so that's good for me. You can't really put it together wrong because it won't fit the other way. Really. Obviously it's early days yet, I'll put this all together in a proper layout and maybe I'll even be organised for once, but it's probably not real likely, is it? Anyway, and then we just slap that there, and that there. Ta -da, ta -da. Cool, hey? And then obviously they just all stack together. So here I am in my lovely wife's backyard. She's very endearing, my woman. I don't know how she puts up with me, quite honest. I've decided to make this me paint room because it's kind of out. It's got a nice bit of protection with the trees and, and I figure the floor is actually cleanable with a lawnmower. So how bloody good's that? You don't even have to worry about drop sheets and mats and, because over here, you see the other day when I was spray painting, the, the floor's already cleaning itself. So I reckon that's a damn good idea. And here's a little bit more Pinterest stuff. Or Pinterest, Pinterest, isn't it? So if anybody wants to know how to make a paint rack that doesn't cost nothing, you gotta find some old packing crates. And I had some old wood that I had laying around. Cause I had these flat for a start and they were a pain to try and get painted with a spray gun. So I thought, well, I'll put them up on an angle. So I had like this and I just nailed these bits of board to it. And then you've just got your thing that you can turn around and paint, you've got your lid. It's actually stuck there because I'm a high tech bloke. And it sits, that lid sits in there. And the leg sits in there. And you... I tried painting them before I put them together, but that was a pain in the ass because a little bit of paint, it was so perfectly designed that that little bit of paint made them hard to put together. So I found it's better to put them together like this and knock them, up, knock them together and let them sit. And as far as I could read, the guys say that it's not really about trying to preserve the styrene. It's about trying to stop the UV getting to the to the bees because the styrene isn't 100% UV safe so that's why we're painting them and and I think just it's going to help them and they look aesthetically pleasing and maybe I'll be able to have different colors for different strains or something like that yeah I'm not get that far but at this stage I've got I've basically just got different crazy looking boxes that I bought from all over the countryside so I know what's what but if I have something uniformed I guess I'm gonna have to put numbers on them or playing cards or something. Don't know. 
I'm thinking I'm going to have green section, red section, pink section, and I don't know, idiot section. <laughs> Our friends in Finland have thought of everything because they've obviously they've obviously been beekeepers longer than me, which wouldn't be hard since I've only just started. Anyway, so here's your bottom board, and they've got this cool mesh. They use it for the varia beetle that they've got. Well, yeah, um, you know they've got a real drama going on over in the states and over there, and it's just supposed to help that. But that's really going to be really cool for us to keep them cool. So they actually, so they can ventilate. Ah, come on, behave. Ah. Obviously, want it bee proof, so that's a bit of entertainment. <laughs> ah. And then I reckon that should be pretty good. But you could get real excited and put a little, put a little screws in the corner. We'll see. Yeah. See what happens with that. I don't know. So you've got the nice mesh for summer, and then you get this. I think they actually use this to see how many um, varroa mites or hive beetles are in the bloody thing, which is a good, good idea too. But once you've got that set up, you can slide that in there to keep them warm for the winter. I think I might have trimmed that a fraction too much, but anyway. So now we better put our entrance on. It's pretty cool. It's just got these two little slides. So you can pick how much ventilation or how much... So obviously you've got full, full opening for summer and then you can close it up when it's cold or if you want to close it up completely you can close it completely for when you're transporting them. So you've got your little landing board, cool so there's your bottom bit, then you've got your brood box, yeah, nice and hard. Now I would suggest that that sits, I wonder where that sits, where would you think that would sit son? Something like that. Let's go at the front. Like that. Aha! Uh -huh. Look at that. Oh, that's rocket science. Ta-da! One thing about it, I guess, is they break and wear out. You just buy new ones, which would be cool. Um, then you've got your queen excluder that comes along with the kit. Pop that on there. You can get another bit that fits around here, which will give you another entrance, which is a really cool option. So I'll get some of them later, but this is just what comes with this. That fits in there nicely. And then we've got the, obviously, the first little honey super. And that'll just sit up there. Nice and convenient. Which I reckon looks pretty cool. I think that looks pretty good. And then you've got your lid. And another ingenious thing that our friends have thought of is you've got this is basically sealed for your winter lid and then when you're having a hot spell like we're going to have here in the riverland you flip it over and the girls can get some ventilation either end so how cool is that for an idea and i don't know whether there's actually another like bee friendly netting thing you're supposed to put across here or not i'm not really 100 percent sure about that yet i'm assuming there would be because you don't want to be don't want them building in the roof space anyway, although there's not much roof space there. Anyway, I thought that was a really nifty idea. You can't really see it, but there's some more of those, you know how we put the plastic on here. You can't really see it at the minute, but there's plastic there as well. And there for whether when you put the strap around it. So that'll be that'll give that lid a bit more support because there'll be a strap come across here to hold it all together. And pretty much that's where we're at. And next thing we'll do. Just chuck some ladies in there and see how we get on. Because I reckon they're pretty neat myself. Hell, I might even move in myself. I wouldn't mind living in paradise. So we thought we'd start making a transition into our paradise boxes, which is, uh, I think my painting method has been a little bit at Rapsy's rule, so she's sort of stuck together a bit. But anyway, for this purpose, it'll work. So we've got these Nice friendly little bees here at home. And I thought, well, that'll be a good start because they need to get in, get supered as well because they're too full. And, but I haven't got any more wooden boxes to put on their head. So I thought, well, now's as good a time as any to start start our transition. So let's, let's get to it. As if you're playing around with beekeeping and you're not really sure whether your box is full, on a warmer day, this is a pretty telltale sign that the girls are looking for some more space. <laughs> when they're hanging out the box like that on a warm day, they're saying, help, help, Mr. Bee Man. While we're over here fooling around with these girls that I got at home, I'll show you my little wax cleaning exercise. So I've got some wax and I've got this funny old little lean-to 
and I thought I'd throw it out in here. Because we tried, we tried separating some wax last time and it was a bit, bit of a disaster. So I was thinking, well, maybe if the, if the ants and the bees clean it up to a point, get all the honey and crap out of it, then we're gonna make a, a bee wax melter out of some glass and let it wet, but it's sort of, they're cleaning it up pretty good. You can see the ants and bees, well, the bees are calmed down now, but we've got plenty of ants running around here eating honey. And I thought the other cool thing is, is the height of recycling, because the girls get to eat the wax, eat the honey, put it back in the box, and then we can catch that honey too. So it's a win-win situation. So the other day I was down there at the bush and I'd actually put this little bit of honeycomb on the top of one of the hives to give them a bit of a boost, because it was out of the lid of a different one. And I thought, oh, well, they can always leak that. So the, rather, because I didn't have anything to put it in. So I sat it on this bit of board and sat it in their hive. And then when I came back, they'd made it so bloody clean, I couldn't believe it. So I thought, hence I thought, well, I might actually utilize this idea to clean up the honeycomb. Check that out. I mean, it's very young, so that's why it's so white. So it was only really fresh. But still, that's some pretty cool wax without a hell of a lot of effort. Just a bit warm out that up a bit. Hey, presto, candles, here we come. Just gonna give the girls a little bit of smoke before we um, get started on this changeover. So I thought that might just calm them down a bit, chase some of these block back in their box. It's calmed down, it's not like quite so hot now, so that's good. After today when it was 40 something. Now these little girls, these little girls I got from a bloke down in the city who runs a um, garden for the town. And so they're, he reckons they're the super friendliest bees ever. So I thought, well, they might be Nice little additive add to our gene pool. They haven't stung me yet, so they must be friendly. <laughs> anyway, let's get them out of here. I bet you there's not even any lid on here. Shit, look at them go. Girls, what are you doing? Holy mackerel. This is what happens when you, this is what happens when your emergency housing turns into something that they stay in for too long. Now yeah, we'll see how bloody friendly they are, won't we? I just tapped them in there because they might be little nurse bees and they won't fly real flash. Uh. Good ladies. No wonder we got some bees in here. Look at this brood coming on. She's not only friendly, she's doing a bloody good job. So we're um, just gonna put the super straight on these. As you can see, they're needing to be supered, which is what we're doing because we haven't actually got any wooden ones to put on them anyway. So we thought it was ideal time to change up to these new Paradise foam boxes. One frame of honey for the top. We'll get the other frames in there in a minute.
just because it's going to be a blustery night and these guys haven't got anything stuck together yet and we haven't got enough straps, I might just put these old boxes back on top of these new boxes just to hold the lids on. And plus, well, then they can get orientated. I think that was reasonably successful. Being that we left our run a little late because it's sort of a bit of a cool change blowing in now. We um, were busy I mean, trying to stay under the air conditioning for a little while. So here we are, changed the moving to our paradise hives. Tomorrow morning when they settle down a little, we'll put the rest of the frames in once the girls run under the queen excluders. And hey presto, we'll see what happens. Welcome back, here we are again. Hopefully I'm not gonna get divorced after we have this episode because I'm in my wife's kitchen again, messing about. Um, she's not home because she's at work making some coin, which is good. Um, anyway, cool thing about the internet, you're on the internet because you're watching me right now, but the cool thing about it is you get to find out some other stuff and I wouldn't be the only beekeeper that happens to have these hive beetles that are a right royal pain in the butt for the bees. Actually, the interesting thing about the hive beetle while I'm on this little subject, I was reading up about them and apparently the bees put them in a, like a bee jail. They actually herd them up into the corner of the hive and they hold them there so that they can't get out. And of course us beekeepers go and smoke them and do stupid shit and they all run away. But the other really cool thing that they said was that the hive beetles have worked out that if they nibble on the bees mandible things, the bit they feed the other bees with, it secretes a liquid that the hive beetles can live on. So how messed up is that? So the bees have got them in jail and feeding them. But anyway, I digress. I just thought that was a fascinating piece of information. They had some CD cases and they said, you get a CD case and you put it in the bottom of the box, which is, makes sense because that's where the beetles are, hidden down there, and they like to hide. And so you get a, get a CD case, one of these, or a So Fresh. It used to be fresh, but now it's pretty old. That was a stupid album here in Australia if you didn't know what that joke was about. <laughs> anyway, and it's just kind of cool because it's got these little holes here already. So we want them to run in these little holes. So hopefully the bees will chase them around or they'll just think this is a cool place to hide. And then we're in here when we lift this up, if a bloke could get them open. This is, oh, you've got to love technology. <laughs> if you're under about 15 and wondering what the hell this is, this is what us old codgers used to get our music on. And in here there was a disc and we used to play the rock and roll from there. We didn't have it on our phone or on our laptop or ivy pop thingamajig it was like old school you even had these in your car how cool was that anyway i digress but it was good fun back in the day apparently now they're going back to lps which is kind of groovy anyway shut up <laughs> so we're going to put this in here and we're going to put this in the bottom of the box and i'm going to get some cooking oil that i happen to have in the cupboard i just wanted to put a couple of dobs of cooking oil in the bottom of here because in the beetle traps you put the cooking oil and i thought well if we put a little bit in here then um, the bugs will run in there and get stuck in it and drown and you know whatever else and then hopefully we can clean them out and do another lot in a week or so. Of course you can buy some cool burtic sand or some shit that's poisonous and messes them up pretty good. But anyway, we're just going to go natural and see whether we can do that. So it was like I thought, well if I tip that on there I'm going to make a hell of a mess and it'll get in deep shit. So I'm going to tip it in this little jar. This is a bit of used cooking oil so it's got a bit of, bit of flavour going on. Because, you know, waste not, want not here in the bush. So anyway, I just thought I was looking for an eyedropper. But, you know, you can't have everything. Because the funny thing is we went to try and buy some CD cases, which was really quite hilarious in the town. And a little lovely little shop assistant said, What do you think we are? We haven't got any CD cases. So I rummaged, rummaged through my own crap and found a few. So anyway, that's where we are. So I have to get online and buy a box full, I guess. They cheaper by the thousand. Anyway, I just thought we'd dab a bit of this crap in here like this. And then we can close the lid up. Put that in the bottom of the box. And then come back in a week's time and see what little brutes have run in there. Here we go, here we go. We've got the beetle blaster in this one. Mm. We'll have a bit of a look at what's going on. Here's a few little ones in here. It's not real bad infestation. The girls are gonna give it a pretty good run. But some were better than others, obviously. I inherited these bloody beetles. So the joys of, the joys of getting other people's excitement. Anyway, that happens, doesn't it? Mind you, those wild ones we caught the other day, that's they had them as well this morning when I was looking at them. So, bastards. They're a mongrel little creature. We'll see if we can get a little bit of footage of them running out of the, of them running out of the front of the hive, but 
It might be a little bit jolly hot here at the minute. Here goes one. Yeah. Here it goes. Just checking out the how we've what we've caught in here. We've got a few in here, but not too many. I don't think it's really the best country for the hive beetle because it's so blowing hot and dry here. Apparently they need a little bit of moisture to breed in, but of course, you know, I'm watering these trees here, so they probably love that. But I don't know, we might have got a fair few of them because it's like really thinned out. The last few times I was here, this was like heaps in it. Of course, that's typical, isn't it? We bring it, bring it out here so you guys can see it and then we're winning. It's a bit like when you're a kid and you bring your dad out into the yard and say, Dad, Dad, look at this, I can bloody shoot that hoop. And what happens, you can't get the damn ball through the thing for a million dollars. We're just gonna dismantle this and we've got a gap at the bottom over this, get this, the super and the brood box off. And then we're gonna actually put the little ca mite catching CD case at the bottom of the bottom. So we'll just clack it at the back, hopefully crack the seal. Well, it looked, it looked like an easy idea on the internet. <laughs> oh, shit. Ah, there we go. That was a bit crook, still. The girls have done too good a job. They've hooked her all together. Now, they're not very happy. They're not very happy about this idea. Oh. Yeah. See, they're not really bloody hectic, are they? Get out of there. I ain't sitting in that corner, they're just fucking perfect. Oh. That part of things, it's good, it's the right size. Hey. Well, I don't know, they fit it in there beautifully. That was a perfect fit, but getting it in is a pain in the ass. This one's gonna work. Come over here, muscles. Ready? The only thing I'm thinking is I'm going to have to wait for this hefty young lad to come back in a couple of weeks' time to help me get the things out if I'd have it worked. <laughs> anyway, we'll put some on the top of the other ones. It'll be easier. Yep. There we go. Funny on a hot day, look how quiet they are. I mean, it's, I don't know what it is here, 44 in the shade or something stupid. The girls have all gone inside having a tina colada and sitting around the pool, I reckon. There are only the poor suckers that have to go out and replenish the air conditioner. The rest of them, I think, are just chilling out. So they're bloody sensible. They were really flat out this morning, and now look at them, they're just chilling back. It's only us idiot beekeepers that are out in this heat. These are in the spring, and now coming into summer, the beetles are actually dying down, so which is pretty cool. So hopefully they don't like hot weather. Well, they don't leave hot, dry sand. So, cause I think they've got to get out of the hive, lay their eggs in the sand and then get back in. So I don't really know what purpose a blooming hive beetle serves other than being a pain in the ass. I did read some research about the wax moth, which is a real, another damn nuisance. And apparently in the, in the wild, like a little bit of wax moth damage on the comb is good because then they get to build new comb and you know, like replace it rather than like we actually give them new comb in these boxes. So there's a bit of digression. But anyway, so far so good. We'll just see what happens with the CD cases. I don't know how the hell I'm gonna get them back out of there. No, me, I'll probably leave them in there and forget them. <laughs>